Hi, I'm Acting Monmouth County Prosecutor Chris Gramiccioni. I need your attention to something. This is the most important thing that I think I can communicate to you. Over the next several weeks, you're going to be learning about the addiction that heroin and opiates abuse can create. I know many of you are sitting there thinking, I don't need to hear this. I got better things going on. Please just listen to me. This is killing people at your age, young people, more than anything else out there. It is downright an epidemic, and it can happen to you and people that you're friends with. This drugs, these drugs, they don't discriminate on the basis of race, gender, ethnicity, your level of affluence, or where you live, or how old you are. Just do me the favor and listen to what I'm going to say, because you might know somebody who's got a problem. You might, God forbid, one day have a problem, and I need this to sink in. I know there's a million things that you could be doing right now, and paying attention to me is probably not one of them, but I need you to listen. It's probably some of the best information that we in law enforcement can convey to you all. You all are the future of New Jersey, the future of America. We need you to be there. Heroin and opiates are killing people that live among us. If you would just take the time to pay attention to the messages that are going to be conveyed in these DVDs and videos you're going to see, I would really appreciate it. All systems are a go. It's gone too far in the big four hearts. We're stepping in the ring. We're going to take them down. Who are the druggies, burnouts, users, addicts, and dopeheads in Monmouth County, New Jersey? Do you think you know the answer? Can you name other kids in your class that are using? Can you point to your neighbors, family members, and friends that get high at least once a week? Maybe it's not who you think. No one is immune to drug addiction. In Monmouth County, as well as the rest of the state and country, athletes, honor roll students, and student council members are just as likely to try opioids as the at-risk students in the same community. Drug use and abuse doesn't just come from a tough life. One of every two teenagers will try some form of drugs during their years in high school. One in 20 teenagers will progress to prescription opiates or heroin before they graduate. Heroin is never a one-time drug. Once you try heroin, you're hooked. That means one of every 20 teenagers are addicted to heroin or prescription opiates before they earn their diploma. What types of drugs are these American high school students trying? Often they start with prescription drugs like Oxycontin or Vicodin. Either they experienced an injury and were prescribed it by a doctor and they were never able to wean themselves off of it, or they steal it from parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles. Once prescription drugs get too expensive, they move on to the cheaper form of opioids available on the street. Here in Monmouth County, New Jersey, they typically find heroin, either in one of its purest forms or laced with dangerous drugs like fentanyl. These kids are not urban junkies. They are not from at-risk families. They do not live in run-down areas hanging out on the streets all night. These kids come from suburban neighborhoods. Their parents are lawyers, doctors, accountants, managers, nine-to-fivers, stay-at-home moms, PTA presidents, soccer coaches, and town leaders. So now I'm just taking it day by day and trying to put all that stuff behind me. Thank you, Chris, for sharing. 
I'm glad that you're able to move forward after um, such recent tragedies and months. Okay, who else would like to share? I guess it's my turn. Hi, I'm Johnny and I'm a drug addict. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Johnny. I guess I never really thought of myself as a drug addict. I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't even think that I was using drugs. I just, it. It's okay, Johnny. It's the first time you're sharing with us, so why don't you just start from the beginning? Oh, I don't know. I guess I liked going out with them. I mean, I liked being with my family enough. All right, who wants to go for some ice cream? Me, me, me! Brandy, go get your shoes and meet us at the car. Johnny, you're going too, right? Yeah, sure. It was just if my dad hadn't, <laughs> I mean, if we didn't go out for ice cream that day, none of this would have happened. We were just on our way back home. It was ordinary. It was my parents, my little sister, me. We were just all in the car, you know? Nothing, nothing crazy. I, could, I couldn't believe when that car just came out of nowhere. Can I keep turning on the music? What, are you getting too old for the house music? Ha ha ha, you're so funny. You're not that far behind me, though. Daddy, look out! Oh my god! Ah! That day, my uh, little sister and dad both ended up in the hospital. I was so, so scared. My mom was a wreck, of course. Brandy came home that night with a broken arm. My dad came home a few days later with some minor injuries, but he had to have surgery, so they gave him some painkillers to help recover. You know, my dad's the strong type, you know, so he never took any of his pills. I noticed that right away. But I never really thought ever to take them. But I suddenly realized at that time that no one cared that I was there. My mom, you know, was too busy taking care of Brandy, you know, because she got hurt. I didn't. I guess a broken arm or something, you know, would have showed them that I still was there. $20. I can get it from your wallet if you want. I don't have want. time to think about that right now. I have to help your sister. You should be helping your sister. Can't you see she's having a hard time with this sleep? There you go, baby. So, I guess they, I thought that they would have noticed me if I started to do stuff. So I started by skipping school. It was one day a couple of days, a whole week. You know, I guess they noticed because I got in trouble. I got grounded, they took my phone, you know, stuff like that. That just made me so, so angry. Angry at them for treating me this way. You know, angry at Brandy for getting hurt. Angry at my dad for taking us out for ice cream. You know, looking at the prescription bottle, I knew it was wrong, but I didn't care. You know, my mom or dad had had no idea. They were too busy showering brandy with unicorns and cotton candy. So, looking at the bottle, I, f you know, I finally grabbed it and I took one. Now, I guess I liked it because I kept on doing it. But one day, the bottle was almost empty, and so was I. I guess I, I guess I took too many. But that wasn't bad enough. Brandy was the one who came and found me. I mean, I'll never forgive myself for putting her through that. She's only 12 years old. 
She shouldn't have to find me like that. Like, well, I guess that's my story. It's pretty pathetic. But I guess a lot of families have, you know, someone like me. Somebody who wants to be noticed. Somebody who just, you know, sees an opportunity and takes it. Just somebody that just wants help. You know, we're all so, so normal. You know, everything was normal that day. I guess normal is all relative. I guess I'll never experience normal again. Thank you, Johnny. Before our family had to deal with drug abuse, we were a typical normal family. I was a typical mom, I was a room mother, I was a coach, I did all what I thought were the right things. If there was a project in school, we would make sure that we would go right to the source. You know, if it's a diorama in history, we were in New York at the museums. We thought we were doing everything right. Typically, it, it, they're saying now it's the new face of heroin because you just would not expect somebody who looked like myself to possibly be someone who has an issue with it. You know, it's a tough call because we all feel that we're doing the right thing. And sometimes our daily life, you're involved with work and with other children and with, you know, just daily responsibilities. Just take the time to talk to your children because parents are really the most important. And it's been proven over and over again that if parents really talk to their children about this, that it would minimize. And also doing family dinners, things like that, they're proven. They're proven to open up the conversation, open up the relationship with your child. Parents are really important in their child's life. And if they may maybe know the other parents of kids that they're hanging around with, that they communicate with them, to make sure that, you know, if somebody's gonna be home safe, there's a party, and also saying straight out, are you sure there's not gonna be alcohol? Are you sure someone will be home? Is there a chaperone? Things like that are important. Typical signs that you would see with a child who maybe is starting to experiment with drugs could be hygiene, not really taking care of themselves, sleeping late, maybe scratching. That's one of the signs of maybe an opiate use. Uh, different friends, changing attitudes. Maybe they were very athletic and into soccer, say, and uh, all of a sudden they're not interested in that anymore, or certain hobbies, whatever it may be. Some advice that I would have for teenagers, stay involved with the right people. Don't experiment because before you know it, you will be addicted. Kids don't typically see that something like a prescription drug could lead into a heroin use, and it does. You know, not for all children, but it, it does. Stay involved with the right people. Do sports, do music, have a mentor. Be proactive in maybe talking to your peers about not doing it. You know, learn different ways to say no. Stay involved with your family. If you see something, don't just dismiss it. If you think that something's going on and something's out of the norm, investigate. All systems are Down from the top